Why are men in the church becoming more feminine? Why are men in the church becoming more feminine? No more ways to tell. Let's check it out. I'm not trying to offend anyone and probably will because I'm always offending somebody. But what is it with the pastors and the people, the men in the church looking and like talking like it that's that's the first thing i don't want to say looking right the first thing is the mouth like the way they talk it has a little sass in it why are you sassier than me and they have large followings i've been to a church like that i've been to i've been to multiple churches like that right where i'm like hmm this man has a little bit i mean men have sass right but the sass bar went over a little while. Mm. Okay. And then it comes to the to the dressing. The clothes are so tight. And then they have and it, it, it be the ones that that they call themselves prophet and apostle and stuff like that. That's why I'm just like, all right, bro. But the pastors, their clothes are tight fitting. And you know, do you, but also for me, like, that's just not that's not what I want. And that's okay. And if that's okay. All right. So she listed a few things there that she was complaining about where she noticed that a lot of men in church are becoming more feminine. And the question is why? What do you guys think? She got some of these comments. Top comment says clothes, especially clothes, are fitting tighter because everyone wears fast fashion and it is easier and cheaper to make clothes with less panels. Somebody else here added because their target audience is women. They have to find a way to be subconsciously relatable. This is very, 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 very true. Very true. You go to a church, man. Women are outnumbering men like crazy. Especially if it's one of these mega churches. The women outnumber the men. And how many times have I played a video of these pastors just pandering on the pulpit, just pandering the Devon Franklins and other pastors. Their messages are clearly tailored to a female audience. So she responded to that comment about so, their target audience are women. Here's what she had to say. So this is a really good point. And um, I uh, have experienced that myself. Um, one of the churches that I've recently gone to, like, okay, so I have two experiences, like, from two churches I've really um, been a part of. And um, the first one was amazing. That's where I really got on fire for the Lord. They weren't pressed about money. Like, you, you know, it was there that I was led. I'm like, wait, I'm not tithing. I need to tithe, right? Um, and giving to the church, but then there was change in leadership. And then that's when they started to ask for money, but I was supporting it because we were in a smaller building and the church was expanding because it's just a great church, you know? So you understood that, but then next church I go to is just money, money, money. And then they really press on it and I started to fall into it. Um, um, but it's also because I was believing the vision, but they got you, um, to be like, you know, emotionally connected. Mm. Um, and then also too, what I felt is though, is that, um, I don't want to say I was targeted, but you know, when you dress a certain way, you, you know, um, you carry yourself a certain way and then when people start talking to you, they're like, oh, you do this, you do that. And you know, they're like, oh, well. Mm, this could be somebody who could, you know, benef benefit the church financially. And it was like, they didn't do a good job of hiding it. And I was just like, what? She's, I, I want to focus on what she said earlier of they, they connected with her emotionally. Um, but also, too, what I wanted to say was, um, one, not all churches are like this. Not all pastors are like this. Not all men of God are like this. That's 100%. true. No, but it's just an observation that I have made. And it's quite concerning because I don't see people talking about it. And um, but you, I, I see it a lot, a lot, a lot, you know, via social media, because that's how we see a lot of things. Um, but another thing that I was thinking about is that um, it's hard to pick on the clothes, right? Because 
what I have noticed is that, or what we have all can notice, is that the fashion industry, look how the fashion industry has changed as a whole. Not, you know, in the church, right? As a whole. And look how it's gone for men. It's becoming to be, you know, we're having men wearing dresses and skirts. We're not used to that. And society is telling us like, okay, that's okay. But is it? And society, yes. And women support a lot of these men who wear skirts. If you're somebody who identifies as trans, I personally don't care what you do. I think where it becomes weird for me is when you see them pushing these images onto men who, as a whole, don't really identify. So, for example, you see this a lot in, like, rap. You know, it's, it's real popular for rappers to paint their nails. And, of course, the younger men are watching this and being influenced. If you, as a man, say, hey, it's okay to not wear a dress, it's okay to be a man and be masculine, now you are seen as evil. Right? You're seen as somebody who is against progress. Like what why is it that progress is men wearing skirts and progress cannot be men embracing their masculinity? There's a very, very obvious on every, every, every aspect of our society an obvious hatred for masculinity from both men and also women. Because a man wears man clothes it's in the word it's in the word pretty sure it's in like Leviticus, right mm -hmm. so um the fashion industry and how you see that um emasculation of the men um you see that carrying on in the fashion industry and then that goes on into the church so if satan's infiltrating the church through fashion what else can he be doing we already know he's in the church, but like, you know, there's more things that come to it. It's like, it's underlying things, you know, that turn into big things. And, um, you know, I'm going to speak my mind about it. People are going to disagree. People are going to disagree. But if we don't have the conversations, then like, you know, what what's going to happen? All right, guys, that is it for this particular segment of What's Brewing. Of course, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Leave your comments down below. I appreciate you as always for checking out yet another episode of the Coffee Pot. And it's something about peace.